Okay, Joey Diaz, um, we'll start here. When <laughs> was it? When was the date that me and Joey became personal? Arch nemesis. You know, when was it, Jules? When was the first time? On our YouTube, the first video you posted about this Xanax thing was three years ago. Wow. I'll so send it to you three you years ago, we accused Joey Coco. Diaz, the comedian, the big fat monster. We accused him of having a Xanax addiction. Pull this up on YouTube here. Red Bar YouTube. Joey Diaz. Xanax. Let's see what happens. Oh, this caused quite the stir. Remember this? Uh, when we did our little thing. Joey Diaz responds. Okay, that's response. Joey Diaz. Xanax. Uh, Xanax. Uh, <laughs> Xanax. <laughs> By the way, Joey, I just took up Xanax. <laughs> and ain't nobody doing shit about it. They nobody cares. So I actually am a pro Xanax now. So there you go. So look at this video. This is from when? Three years ago. Why does it say old red bar? Joey Diaz Xanax addiction exposed. Coco caught lying. On JRE, and this is an old, let's just see what this says here. You know, I want to say Biggie Mike. Oh, Joey Diaz. Yes, yes. Oh, my God, that's a good one. Joe <laughs> Rogan. Wait till you see Joey Diaz. You know, uh, he's got a lot of fans. Joey Coco Diaz. Wow, I almost opened this the same way. <laughs> so we accused him of having a Xanax addiction in this video based on some stuff that he was saying on Rogan. D7 today is Joe Rogan. This is just, I'm never going to find anything good here. It's just me. I don't remember really how this started, yeah. but I'm sure it was but great. I guess here's the title. Joey Diaz, Xanax addiction exposed, question mark. You know, how stupid are you to not know what clickbait, like, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't understand. So when Joey Diaz sees this, remember, look at this guy. This is Joey Diaz from three years ago. So imagine how old he is today. This is three years ago, Joey Diaz. Consider that. Um, so there he is, and he sees this. Imagine he's scrolling through YouTube on his laptop that his grandson set up for him. And then lands on this. Joey Diaz, Xanax addiction exposed. Coco caught... Trying to lie to Joe Rogan, and he explodes. And I'm pretty sure the only reason that we watched this was because Joe said something about Xanax, and then Joey just did a comic like, oh, what the? Yeah. I, uh, I, yes. Like a stupid cinema lie yes. that caught our eye, and that's the only, like, so, Xanax but, addiction So exposed. imagine, though, Joey sees this, okay? He don't get what we're getting at, you know? <laughs> like, we have no idea what his addictions are. We're hoping. So he sees this video and flips the fuck out. Uh, and then we made a video of that. And it In was here. us responding. Here, this is just a teaser here at the beginning. This was him responding to me. In here, in case I have an emergency. Because this is how I roll. Because you have no idea what it's to have anxiety. I have green zanny bars. He was talking oh, to me here. A friend of mine bar. gave me on the road. Oh my I God, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Why are you saying this? Point two five, whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is a No, he's gonna die. Look at him. I don't take him. Don't you see? Point two five. Hell yeah. Don't take him. Hello, Joey. How are you? Okay, so it's another one of these long clips. I uh, wait, 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 encourage. Dark Mike, look at that black hair. Oh, Dark Mike, yeah. Damn, look at you. Zoom in on your bod for a second. I don't think I want to go anywhere <laughs> near me. No, 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 no. Do a self zoom. No, no, I'll you zoom into this. Here's Joey Diaz here. We had an animation of him drooling. <laughs> Thank you, Sven. Yeah. So we did these uh, back and forths with Diaz. Let's play you here. We'll play you this. Joey threatening to kill us. So it got so bad. And there's a lot more to this story. You're going to have to go back and watch the Red Bar archives on the Scars Club at redbarradio.net slash scars. It's like joining Cumtown, right? let people into the brain. If you're going to pay for Cumtown, <laughs> that's the slogan should be for the Scars Club. Red Bar Scars Club, $11. If you're going to pay for Cumtown, I mean, come on, get with it.
So Joey Diaz threatening to kill. Uh, I don't know how many people. I don't know if we ever played this. This happened while I was sick, while we were on hiatus. This Joey Diaz tape. <laughs> uh, Joey Diaz insane meltdown about Red Bar. 14 minutes long. Let's play this tape. As I don't think this tape has been played on this show, right? Jules? Um, no, I don't think we actually ever watched this. It was kind of like a couple months old when we came back, and we just yes. never ended up going back that far. But this is a perfect opportunity because Joey Diaz was just on Joe Rogan talking about how he had a two-year Xanax addiction. <laughs> Uh, heavy, heavy, heavy Xanax addiction. However, when I said he had a Xanax addiction, he made a 15-minute video about wanting to kill me. Uh, for real kill me. Listen to this. <laughs> then Jimmy told me he smoked the Florentine. He smoked the trips. And then I called Sammy trips. Oh, my God. What the fuck happened with our boy from Chicago? That's me. Yeah, don't say his fucking idiotic name. He's a fucking... This guy <laughs> wait, this is, is hiding. Wait, hold on. What? This what? is what? exciting, actually. This I is actually it. fucking crazy. <laughs> just you just I saw Joey Diaz pushing his book on Joe Rogan, the big famous Joey Diaz. He's currently on a media tour for his new book, Tremendous, in which I bet he has a bunch of stories that I love to fact check. I don't think they like lying in book for him. So his new book, and Joey, tell Joey this. Oh, Mike hired an independent fact checker, third party. Just throw those words. Independent third party fact checker. What the fuck? This is legit. And they said that they found a lot of discrepancies in your new book, and he's going to do a whole video exposing it. Tell him that. Tell him that. Tell him that. <laughs> oh, my pills! I'm getting you back on that Xanax. If I'm going to take them now, you're taking them now. We're the disgusting brothers. I've got a lot of pairs of guys where I want to be the disgusting brothers with them. I think we could do a buddy cop movie after this. I think so too. And featuring Lil Z a cameo by Lil Zan just for fun. Okay, wait, how many so, people in the chat press one if you haven't heard this video before? I'm people just might think they have. Well, it's been all over YouTube. But let's just start playing it. And listen, this is actually very exciting because Joey Diaz is at the height of his career now. And he got a new boost recently with this new book and this tour he's doing. And um, this is a good time to show people what he said he was going to do. <laughs> this guy is hiding. He hasn't been on for like a year, right? On YouTube. He's hiding. I didn't know he was hiding. He's talking about me. He, listen, guys. He said some shit about me. It bothered me for like a day. A lot of shit. Then I realized who this guy was. I realized that he was attacking Rogan, Segura, Bert Kreischer, Theo. This is amazing. Dalia. I mean, dude. Sometimes wait, the stuff can I go happens. Get another drink. Yeah. For this? Sometimes the stuff happens so fast where you you don't remember how like crazy it is. All right, here he is, Joey Diaz, doing a nice. And this is cut from a longer piece, I believe. You might be able to find this on Uncle Joey's Joint. Or uh, what was it called? Yeah, Uncle Joey's Joy. All right, let's hear him out. When you look at this guy's videos and you yeah, see yeah. this, listen, I sit here sometimes and I say some shit about people, but I don't cross the line. Uh, not here. If I'm going to cross the line, I'll cross the line to your fucking face. I'm not going to cross the line on here. I'd rather cross the line. I don't want you to call me and go, hey, man, I heard you were talking. Imagine being addressed personally by the mafia. That's what this is like. Imagine the leader of the mafia. <laughs> or one of the big guys in the mafia is after you and composing tape publicly about you. Imagine how <laughs> scary that would be. And how insane. I hope I'm in the book tremendous. You should have bought me in the podcast. No, no. I'll see you at the comedy club and I'll tell you what I was saying. You know, when you watch his videos... My videos. At first, I thought they were kind of amusing. Oh. But then they're sad. Oh. They're sad because... Fuck. He's a white kid that had everything going for him in his life. He's got rich parents. His family's got money. Oh. And he sits on a thing all day 
again, with his white privilege and his little bottle. With his white privilege? Is he that Cuban? <laughs> that part was weird, too, because it's like you're using the term white, white privilege, privilege against somebody. I've never heard a guy like this go, this guy with his white privilege. I don't think that's actually the term he meant. Let's see what happens. Bad because he's a white kid that had everything going for him in his life. He's got rich parents. His family's got money. And he sits on a thing all day, again, with his white privilege and his little bottle of fucking whiskey. Whoa. And Whoa. he thinks it's cool. And his wife or his girlfriend or whoever that is. And he thinks it's cool saying the things he's saying to people. One day, that's actually we very locked the podcast wait, wait, wait. up. That's before like the, the most church. accurate, because nobody would ever say it. He thinks it's cool to say bad things about people. And it's like, that's actually exactly what I think. <laughs> like, that's the nicest way anyone's ever put it. He thinks it's cool to make fun of people. Yes, we all do. It's actually very cool. It's one. That's why we're like probably one of the cooler podcasts out. So I think it's cool. They think it's cool. You think it's pretty cool, <laughs> right? Let's see. Girlfriend, whoever that is, and he sure. thinks it's cool saying the things he's saying to people. Wow. One day before we locked the podcast up, before the church went down. One day I was going through some emails. I'm like this is just oh whatever. Uh, Listen to this. The the ones you get on Facebook that don't come to you. The private messages. Yeah, the private messages. And I got a message from some dude saying, "Listen, don't don't threat this fucking guy. We're gonna kill him and all this shit." I <laughs> Joey said he was going through email. Did you hear this? I was going through some emails. I got a message from these guys that had been tailing him. They said, "Don't don't worry." We got this guy. We're going to take him out. Like this season on Barry. He's living in Barry. I'm not kidding. He could be. This could be Barry. This could be part of a scene from the show. Barry on HBO. He would kill on that show, honestly. I got an email about Mike David from Chicago. They said, don't worry, Joey. We're on his tail. He won't be a problem. No more. Okay. okay. Well. They're working very slow. This was from how many years ago now? Okay, let's see. Don't, don't track this fucking guy. We're going to kill him and all this shit. I, I, listen, I can go back down. If you want, we'll get a computer fucking expert to find the, the thing on my Facebook. And you can find it. You can read it. And you can see who the fuck sent it. I didn't know who sent it. You know those Facebook things that have no picture on them and shit. So one day I'm with Lee there and I say the Malanucci brothers are looking for me. I don't even know who the Malanucci brothers is. <laughs> it's like me saying the Staminki brothers. You know what I'm saying? This idiot ran with it. He Googled the Malanucci brothers and <laughs> the ass is fucking you know, going to kill me. Listen, guy. You told us in your last video, he said, I got the Gargini brothers. They're coming after you to kill. And we showed everybody that you said that. And now he's going, this guy thinks the Martucci's are coming. After you. It's like, I definitely know the Martucci's aren't coming. But I also knew that the Garginis weren't coming. <laughs> <laughs> Only you believed Gargini during this whole thing. Everyone else <laughs> clearly knew there were no oh my God, those twin such... hitmen named the Gargini brothers. And yes, we did Google it, and that's how we know. <laughs> okay, let's hear some more. Saying the Staminke brothers, you know what I'm saying? This idiot ran with it. He Googled the Malanucci brothers, and <laughs> Diaz is fucking, you know, gonna kill me. Listen, guy. See, he's all he's doing is backpedaling because he did say those things as real threats, and then the internet made fun of him, and now he's going, "This guy believed it." No, we didn't believe it. Why do I feel like Joe? You believed the it. Next person you're gonna make up with and become BMS with like Red Band. Yep. I That's, can see I guarantee, I guarantee, I'll place a bet with anyone here. Within one year's time, if I tried, I could be not only his friend, but a close friend. <laughs> yep. If anyone wants to, I'll do it for, uh, if I can do that, you gotta all get me $5,000. <laughs> uh, no, uh, 500000 What am I saying? $500,000.
is what I meant to say. If you guys can gather up $500,000 cash, I will make sure he's my friend by the end of next year. I don't know if that's worth $500,000 to you. It's not. <gasps> so, but I could do it. 100%. Uh, an anxious man. The last thing an anxious man he wants. He just needs someone to calm him yeah. down. So, what a, uh, an anxious man doesn't want an enemy. They, they, I've seen this happen a lot of times. These guys I pick on, once they realize they would like kill to be friends with me instead of having me as their enemy because it's such a pain in their ass. <laughs> so it's almost like a sweet relief and they almost get excited. I've seen them do it. Cowards. <laughs> Spineless cowards. Uh, but yes, I can trick this stupid old man into almost anything. I'm positive. All right, let's see. Again, I'm not, I don't have the intelligence of Joe Rogan. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the intelligence of Joe Rogan. Again. I don't have the intelligence. I'm so glad we have this proximity effect so I could do deals. Again, I don't have the intelligence of Rogan. Wow. So you're really, really, really bad. As far as intelligence. <laughs> it's not good. You don't even have the intelligence of rope. That's like being like, I don't have the intelligence of a toddler. It's less. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay, let's see uh, what he does here. This is going to be great. And we're only uh, two minutes I know, in. I, I don't really remember that much. Like, I remember the main points, but. Yeah. Two <laughs> minutes in. This is already two minutes in. And we got all that. Uh-oh. Where the hell did he go? Oh. He's been silenced. <laughs> All right, let's hear. Again. I'm not, I don't have the intelligence of Joe Rogan. I don't know what's going on in politics. I don't know what's going on in Russia. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But I do know one thing. I know people and I know how life works. Oh, shit. Oh, when I said that about this fucking me. moron in Chicago... I said it as a throwaway line. It's like the idiot that said, debunk the police, whatever, defund the police. <laughs> he like, did it again. He said, debunk the police on the latest, Rogan. I've been saying that all day and I can't Debunk the police. We've been saying that all week. for like a week. I went He crazy. thinks it's debunk the police. And that's for my threat video? Look that's at this. Why it's such By a the way, wait, you got to see this pause. <laughs> How is that a real frame? Wait, 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 wait. It's black by about, you got to see it. <laughs> Look at that fucking frame. This is not AI generated shit art. That is a true real frame from his home in New Jersey. <laughs> not AI shit AI. <laughs> that is an AI nightmare photo. Have you ever seen those where there's 10 of them? <laughs> you go, great job. Keep working on the face. But very cool. Oh my God. Very cool AI from three months ago. The AI can not have this hiccup anymore. It's that fast. That's insane. Cause sports. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. I can't stop fucking looking at it. He <laughs> looks so screenshot? weird. It's like even funnier. Like, God, you I, don't. I feel like we can't lose this. Like, can you screenshot this? Screenshot those? this. Here, oh, I, yeah, yeah, it's on the show. <laughs> yeah, here, but I'm, I've screened. Screenshot. That's a great ah! idea. And all of a sudden, Whoa. fucking people started hitting them in the head with bats. It's not a good idea, but it's oh too late. God. Wait, what? You fucking would. I, this is he's what he's talking certain. about me? <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go back. It is very tough to follow. Hold on. <laughs> Listen to this. Going on in Russia. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But I do know one thing. I know people and I know how life works. <laughs> when I said that about this fucking moron in Chicago, I said it as a throwaway line. It's like the idiot that said, debunk the police, whatever, defund the police. And I was like, that's a great idea. And all of a sudden, fucking people started hitting them in the head with bats. It's not a good idea, but it's too late. Oh. You fucking were jumping up and down saying defund the police or whatever. I just said like a throwaway line. I'm going to sue whom, you know, every, listen, every two weeks I get a fucking call from a friend of I'm mine or, or Theo. And we just goof on this guy. 
We just hey, laugh. Hey. It's not even. Listen to this. Because- Every couple weeks, I get a call from like Theo Vaughn, and we just goof on this guy. Me. They talk about me on their phone. It's Joey sitting there alone. Hey, Theo. So this joke off into Coco. Again, Theo. Let's speak up, Theo! Speak up! So Theo's out there on the phone talking about me. I haven't heard a peep from Theo. Oh, yeah, I like to keep it professional. I'll expose your... Cru- no, I don't have no problem with you. But I can't believe you're talking... Theo's talking about me? What a wimp! How much of a bitch? I barely said anything about you. You're talking to me? Uh, about me? To him? He's just too much. What can we do about this? So all the team sources came together. They could think of nothing. <laughs> What's the plan? Why can't the top comics keep me at bay? Well, they thought you were at bay at this point because you were, oh. remember, hospitalized. Oh, it's the karma away. that did it to him. The karma. I'm talking about it. Imagine how delusional you would think that God is going to put karma on me for making fun of Joey and Theo. <laughs> That's karma for what you do. Well, I only make fun of you, Kumia, Bisconte, and a bunch of other shit. Out. Yeah, believe me. That, so you think God is, like, favoring you against me? That's nuts. <sighs> Let's hear some more. I know. What, Theo? And we just goof on this guy. We just laugh. It's not even... Because if you're any... If you have any street knowledge, if you know the way life works at all, he's going to get his eventually. I don't have to do anything. Listen, if you think I'm going to pay somebody to go get you... Did you see what happened in Miami yesterday? Or two days ago on that's fucking not Friday. Good. When somebody says something like <clears throat> a that, a dentist got. That's not good. You know what's going to happen here? You see what happened in Miami the other day? Yikes. This is a publicly seen thing that's going to happen to me. <laughs> this is nuts. This is bad. Or two days ago on fucking Friday, <clears throat> a dentist got eight years for fucking, I think he got eight years or four years or five years for planning his brother in law's hit. Okay, he paid guys money, and it happened 11 years ago. They did the hit. Everything went well. (laughs) Those guys go out into the world, and that's an ace in the card now. If they get arrested, they always have an out. I I took a contract from Joey Diaz and went to beat up some guy. I would never fucking pay anybody. I'll do it myself because dead men don't tell tales. Unless you send them, and when they come back, you shoot them both. That's an extra two murders. I'm not in the mood right now for two fucking murders on my jacket. I I don't even care about the fucking guy. (laughs) But people were starting to get concerned. And I get a call every couple weeks from somebody going, this motherfucker is going to go down, this guy. And and he insulted insulted a non-comic. That was the worst move in his life. If I put any money on who was going to hunt this idiot down... It's the one non-comic. I'm not going to say who it is. You have to figure it out since you talk so much shit about everybody. Who he was talking about? A non-comic who's going to hunt me down. I hope it's not Jocko. (laughs) Ooh. I'm Jocko's, like, greatest, like, I'm at the end of his list. We don't stand a chance. Imagine Jocko kicking the door down with, like, eight guys with AKs. We're going! Then I'm t- I wake up and I'm like all blurry and I'm Jocko's torture chamber. Yikes. A non-comic. It could only be Jocko or Lex Fridman. Lex Fridman Who has been building be, a machine that he controls to come <laughs> get me. <laughs> it's finally ready. We can take him down. He said my poetry with Faggotry. Who could it be, though, other than, like, I can't even think of anyone else. I don't know. Does anybody know who this non-comic is that's the worst of them that is going to kill me? It's very scary. I put like any money Jocko. on who was- What's that? The worst guy you could piss off and he's not a comic. Yeah. He's, like, the only one I can think of that fits that description. Brendan Schaub. Now, that was just for the homeless cats. That was just for the homeless cats. <laughs> hey, yeah, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That- Killed them at that Reddit. <laughs> that TFG Reddit. All right, let's hear some more. Who's going to hunt this idiot down? It's the one non comic. I'm not going to say who it is. You have to figure it out since you talk so much shit about everybody. We're trying. So true, dude. It's so true. Life is fucking weird. And Uh-oh. 
he's talked a lot of shit about a lot of people. And finally, Tripoli hired an investigator and found him in Tucson hiding. Knocked on his Whoa. condo. He was out there for 10 hours, Tripoli. Really? Tripoli's going to kill him. Sam Tripoli hired a private investigator, found me, came to my condo, and stood outside for 10 hours, you say? <laughs> oh, interesting. And he's cool and we're crazy. Hold on. Let's hear some more. And the guy wouldn't come down. I give him credit for not calling the police, you know what I'm saying? Because a typical white privilege move is to call the police. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I know you didn't. But here's the problem. When the cops do come, somebody's going to show them all the videos that you said and all the shit you talked about. <laughs> okay, I love what this scene. What are you saying? Scene. I love this scene. Eventually, I'm going to be calling the cops, right? Because they're coming to get me. To kill me, of course. They've been waiting. They're coming to kill me. So I call the cops in this fantasy. And then when the cops get there, because I call them, hey, these guys have, are here to kill me, they're going to go, Officer, may I present you the tapes? You see, Officer, we were going to kill him, but he made these videos about me. He said I was addicted to Xanax, <laughs> and he said triple H kids were retards. Thank you. And then what? The officer would go, let me do the honor. <laughs> Is that kind of what it was going to be? <laughs> Let's hear some more. Somebody's going to show them all the videos that you said and all the shit you talked about. <laughs> and let me tell you something. It's not going to be a good day for you. Oh, I feel sorry man. for you. I feel sorry for this you. I'm not mad. Police go, thanks for telling us, Joey. <laughs> You know, and I go, whoa, 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 guys, fellas. No, no, no. I, I run the police here. They work for me. They do. They really do. You don't know how many how much money I've donated to this. So almost every cop in this precinct. town is a lady cop. Yeah, they're all lady <laughs> cops. They're all sweet as day. And I've, I believe me, I've purchased how many wings of those precincts? I'm good. <laughs> Bad at you. I'm not angry. I don't wish nothing bad at you. And I knew this is going to. Joey Diaz, that his rich dad gave him a million dollar donation to the city of Tucson police, and now the police will like do his bidding. He will believe that. Tell him, yeah, he like made it. He heard you were after him, so he made a huge donation to the precinct. <laughs> and now they're all like, all these cops are like on his side because he's going to keep giving him money from his dad. I know it. I ain't going near Tucson. You'll be here for the mental institution. <laughs> uh, that, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, you don't understand this mental institution. We have a mental institution for famous people here where Bobby Lee went and uh, Kevin Smith just got out of. So apparently, right down the street, we've got a mental health facility for the stars. <laughs> Bobby Lee. Lee also Bobby there. Lee was at the same mental facility. It's like a couple blocks away. So Kevin Smith and Bobby Lee were in this mental facility right down the street, weeping. I have been in the presence of them weep. Now, this is a good thing for me, you know, because now I know where the best mental facility is. I can walk there. We should go to that mental facility now and see if there's any stars there and leak. <gasps> I got the best idea. It's a celebrity mental institute, right? Jules, yeah, I, all the I celebs. Mean, but listen, you put me in the mental institute. I'll pretend I'm crazy. I get in there. I'll record all the celebrities stuff and leak it. And then we'll break me out of the mental institute. And then we'll play all the tapes on the show. I'll go, ah! when I walk in, I'll just, Joey Diaz will be the next one. Don't think I just said mental institute out of nowhere as if that was so funny. Okay. Let's hear some more. That happened to you because you're a fucking moron. Your father gave you too much money. You, you're a Fine. failed fucking comic. You're a failure failed as a comic. comic. The only thing you could basically do is get on a fucking computer and say. So he thinks my dad was rich. He thinks I'm a comic. So this is perfect.
All you can do is get on the computer. <laughs> Joey, I've headlined more cities than you. Tell him that. He says, yeah, he's not a failed comic. He headlined more cities than you. And he said his dad bought out the precinct. So you're fucked. <laughs> they're, they're looking for you. Tell him that Mike paid off a bunch of L.A. cops to frame you for a crime. And it could happen to anyone in the next six years. Or Jersey cops. Yes. Say his dad, you know he has a rich dad. This guy paid off the cops. There's like word on the street. Just fill his mind with anxiety. I want him on those Xanax soon. <laughs> Your father gave you too much money. You, you're a failed fucking comic. You're a failure as a comic. The what only the thing fuck? you could basically do is get on a fucking computer and say lies about people and talk shit about people. Really, bro? Nope. So now you had to leave your home in Chicago. So the lie was, let me remind you, the lie was that I said Joey had a Xanax addiction. <laughs> that's the now, lie. After this, that's the lie I tell that I needed to, you know, be stomped out for. After this, we're going to show you a video of Joey Diaz admitting he had a Xanax addiction the entire time. <laughs> I have not received an apology. And hide in Tucson. And let me tell you something. If you, if you don't think I called my ex-buddies that own Bugsies, that, that fucking Mexican cartel down there that used to eat bugs. He's that, saying he called the cartel. That lives here. Well, they're doing a bad job because we already had a run-in with yeah. them at the weed store. I've outsmarted half the cartel yet. in a month. <laughs> the cartel. Only you would fall for this cartel. They're 80. They don't know how to work computers. They all have, uh, like, uh, Boost Mobile Let's Go phone. Damn, he was so expressive this day. He looks great. Well, listen to this. By the way, the real cartel I respect you dearly. Okay, I'm talking about his fake cartel. And hide in Tucson. And let me tell you something. If you, if you don't think I called my ex-buddies that own Bugsies, that, that fucking Mexican cartel down there that used to eat bugs. Remember I used to go to a club named Bugsies on, in Tucson? It took a fucking, if you walked in there with a scorpion, you got in for free and you got like 10 drinks and whatnot. Let me tell you something, motherfuckers. <clears throat> Life has a weird way of fucking shitting on you when you least expect it. This guy... Did you need this? You're living in Tucson, hiding over a podcast? <laughs> Whoa! What? He, like, lost track of his own thought, his point. <laughs> You're living in Tucson, hiding over a podcast? What? You're the only one in this whole thing that has an issue with what I'm doing. Or what's happening. You're the only one with an issue. Um, so I don't know what podcast you mean. Does he mean his podcast? He wants you to stay in Chicago and quit your podcast so that you can stay in Chicago. I don't know what he means. Isn't the damage done? Aren't the uh, guys already on their way? You got the message. They're on their you're way. Out there hiding over a podcast. Yeah, it's all over a podcast. Living in Tucson, hiding <laughs> over a podcast. <laughs> Think about that. Oh, I, Think about how bad will. your life is that you're oh. hiding in Tucson over a pie. Now where are you going to go next? Because now we got your number. Oh Tripoli got you with a fucking investigator. Oh my God. What, what are you going to do now, man? What are you going to do? For me, I'm yeah. not here to wish you bad. Oh. I'm not here to tell you I'm going to hunt you down. That's not even going to happen. I'm concerned with my wife and my daughter and what's going on here. Even though you had people call my wife and threaten my daughter. Wait, you don't what? think I knew? Whoa, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 that never happened. That was not us. No, no, no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I like zoned out because I was thinking of what am I gonna do? He kept going. What are you gonna do now? And I was thinking, uh, I don't know. Hide in the closet with a gun facing the door. <laughs> we should meet them in Tombstone. Let's meet in Tombstone. <laughs> I've been dying to go down there to take some pictures. We were live by beautiful Tombstone. We'll take him down. We'll do a draw. A duel! That's the only way to solve this. If you don't, this is the new thing. YouTube boxing is out. It's now yes, podcast yes, yes. draw. What do you call it? Podcast. Uh, you draw. What do you, you call do that a thing? No, it's a got a more official name. A, uh, a podcast. Uh, we a stand back to back. We watch 15 paces. It's paces, not steps. And then on the count of three, you turn around and you shoot the guy in the chest. 
a duel? And, by the way, just to let you know, you need to have a licensed gun from Arizona to do this. So, I challenge you to that. I challenge you to a gentleman's. We both sign contracts. No cops. And it's one of those, uh, we go to the tombstone. We wait till it closes. We jump the fence. And uh, we'll do the old-fashioned... This is an amazing idea. It's literally the only what way to settle that? it. A showdown. I'm saying duel, a standoff. Standoff. A sh no, a standoff is when, oh, my God, I ran into this guy robbing the train. What do we, what do, we do here? This ain't going to be a standoff. <laughs> this is going to be a W draw. This motherfucker will have it, hasn't even touched it. I mean, you're guaranteed winning, so... Yeah. So that's <laughs> what I... And, and here's the thing, like... Okay, push out then. Push out. Don't come and do the gun thing with me. Then you're not that tough. Then you lost. I don't That's know what to funny. tell you. I'm willing to do the whole gun thing. Legally. I got the whole city police force is working here. They're, I'll let they'll just come on out. I'll pay for the fly. I don't fly no more, dog. Oh. That's his excuse going to be, right? That he's too afraid to fly. I bet you that's coming up. All right, let's hear him out. I'm concerned with my wife and my daughter and what's going on here. Even though you had people call my wife and threaten my daughter. That was not us. We did not do that. I don't know what You don't is. think I knew it was you. We traced back all the numbers. Okay. Okay. Even though you said things about my friend's daughter, even though you said things about we, Rogan's daughter, you were we, talking about kids and you were saying wait, a lot of... We, we traced back your number. Who are you kidding? <laughs> we traced it? Yeah. yeah. What software did you use? What software? Did, what software did you use? What program? <laughs> what app? Was it an app? Was it a physical machine that did this? Was it the cops? Was it uh, like a forensics guy? Who did it? How did it happen? How did you trace the call? What? Where? How did it all work? <laughs> He's believing me that I traced the call. Yes, because you're being serious. Don't try that. Well, you had people call my wife and threaten my daughter. What? You don't think I knew it was you. We traced back all the numbers. Even though you said things about my friend's daughter, even though you said things about Rogan's daughter, you were talking about kids. You about were that? saying a lot of weird stuff about people, bro. Uh -huh. So this is what you got coming to you. So now what really dazzled me... You're actually very, like, physically threatening. Like, he's yes. almost the same size as a real Joey Diaz to I'm me in away. here. And when he's doing this, it's almost like your fight or flight response is like, I am actually being, you know, dressed down, like really screamed at by this mafia guy. It's very scary. Very scary. It's almost like VR, how this is <laughs> happening right now. Very scary. I'd like a copy of this in VR that I could do, you know, when we do VR. All right, let's see. What people really need to know is how big of a pussy you were that you didn't even come downstairs to meet Tripoli. Mm. Listen to me. Mm. You're going to have to meet these guys eventually. Oh. Talk it out. I really? Like Pay no them off. Ever, wait, wait, wait. I gonna, like how no one ever considers the option that maybe somebody won't be home on a Saturday uh, night. I don't know. <laughs> um, you're going to have to meet these guys eventually and either talk it out or have your dad pay them off, he says. Well, the dad payoff has already happened. So yeah, we're I've already paid ahead, off every bro. comic in this city, and they're all against you, actually. They're all secretly uh, recording you for me. Okay? Tell them that. Joey, I have paid every comic off that's around you, and they're secretly recording him to send to me because I'm making a documentary that Netflix is interested in. Okay? Tell him that. He will believe. Even if he sees this part, you could even leave this in. He's that dumb. People really need to know is okay. how big of a pussy you were that you didn't even come downstairs to meet Tripoli. Listen to me. You're going to have to meet these guys eventually and talk it out. To. Pay them off. Pay get them your off. dad to send them a check. I know you were going to sue me and call the authorities. You did nothing. You did nothing. <laughs> you got no I know you were going to sue me. Tell him this. Dude, he's got like a class action lawsuit. Just throw around every like legal term, even though they don't make sense. He's got a class action phase three lawsuit against you. And phase like three. the judge went over it. He said, dude, this guy might come out with millions. <coughs> Tell me he had the same lawyer as anyone. Just fill his head with different worry. And he you reads these messages. You never know which one will stick. You never know. So throw a hundred worries at him a day. 
And believe me, he'll start having delusions. He'll start going nuts. None, the stand on. Okay. You're a heartless soul of a fucking man. And I'll tell you what, how it's going to go down. It's going to go down very simple. See, anybody who serves a dish correctly is going to give you time to breathe. They're going to let you settle down in Tucson and fucking go back to Chicago and think the coast is clear. And when you least expect it one night, you're going to run out of that fucking whiskey you drink and you're going to go to the liquor store. And there's going to be a guy there with a bat. And he's going to hit you across the fucking head, maybe hit you across the legs, maybe hit you across the back. You're going to wake up with blood all over you and go to a fucking hospital. And you know how bad you're going to feel in that hospital? Bad. After somebody hit you in the fucking head with a bat and you got really stitches. And God forbid if your wife is with him, because your wife had a good time on there too laughing. Remember Woo. how they, they made Rogan be guilty for laughing at my joke? Your wife is guilty of laughter. <laughs> Do I have the air horn still? That would be a good Boy, one. You're living in a fucking fool's paradise. Uh, and what a beautiful thing to be guilty of. You know your wife? <laughs> She's guilty of laughter. Can I make my own You are guilty of, of laughter. Therefore, you will be killed too by the hitman. With the bat. Does he have to do bat? Can't it just be a nice no. gun? No, no, no. It's going to be, I'm going to go to the liquor store. You know, like in a movie from the 70s. <laughs> and then there's going to be guys with bats that rough me up. During my late night liquor store run in a movie. <laughs> Did you see this guy? God forbid if your wife is with him, because your wife had a good time on there too laughing. Remember how they, they made Rogan be guilty for laughing at my joke? Your wife is guilty, guilty of laughter. laughter. That is, your wife is guilty of laughter. <laughs> What do you, and all this for what? For a podcast? I mean, we've got gems out of this one. I can't believe we never watched this. We like came back. Well, and there was, I was like, uh, the first episode back, we wanted to do a bunch of different stuff. We didn't want to like weigh down the whole show with this. And then I was just like, let's just play it during the next time we cover Diaz. And then we just like forgot, kind of, yeah. and then it was too old. But <laughs> now's the perfect time. But this time. is the perfect time because Diaz is back and he's admitted this whole problem, the whole reason he wants to kill me and the bats and all this stuff and guilty of laughter is because we said he had a Xanax addiction. And guess what turns out he did, and he's admitted that. Now we'll show you that tape after this, but there's still more here. Let's see what he says next. So if she's with you, I'm sure they're going to bust her in the fucking mouth, too. Oh, come on. So is this what That's you crazy. really want out of your life? Is this no. what all the... No. Was this podcast no. talking shit about people no. really no. worth you hiding? No. You're fucking living on a lamb over <laughs> saying shit to people. Chris D'Elia, you went off on people. What do you think the result is going to be? Tell them, like, he said all this shit, but they packed their bags and now they're off to Mexico. Tell them that. Don't believe it. I'm going to tell you. Oh, God. And I'm going to do it a la Frankie Five Angels. You ready for this? Oh, shit. oh fuck. He's gone full mob. This is your option, stupid. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is... Can you believe this tape? This needs to be on the news. I'm sorry. This. Come on. Send this to Rogan. This is insane. Does Rogan know he, his buddy is doing this? His best friend? This is wild. <laughs> this needs to be on the news. I've had it. Oh I could be threatened by a celebrity who is in The Sopranos? That seems fair. newsworthy. Soprano star threatens Mike. <laughs> the news. This is nuts. Fuck. Let's hear some more. I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to do it a la Frankie Five Angels. You ready for this? Look at this. This is your option, stupid. Uh -huh. Your option is to get some of that money from your father okay. and pay off some of these comments. Give him 20 grand a piece, whatever. So you. One of my option A is give each of the comics I've made fun of $20,000 so that they. All right, man. Beef squashed. Thank you. Oh, my God. We're, we're cool. And I appreciate the 20000 man. I never wanted it to be like Can't it this. be like 5000 $20,000. I have to. This is what he's saying my options are. Which sounds a lot to me. Like bullying. Illegal bullying. Extortion. Yep. I have to pay all the comics $20,000. You've heard that right.
This is your option, stupid. Your option is to get some of that money from your father and pay off some of these comics. Give them 20 grand a piece, whatever, so you could come out of hiding and live your life like a fucking man. Wow. Your other option is don't pay them. Face Tripoli. Face them, because now they're all going to start hunting you down. And eventually they're going to find you outside and they're going to bust your fucking head. So if oh I was God. you, why don't you face these fucking guys? Be a fucking man. Theo Vaughn just immediately turns into like a maniac and just busts my head open with a wrench. That's from Joey Diaz. I'm mean now. That would be a great fucking be movie amazing. if you were on the run and you're like on a road trip through America yes, trying to escape and at every city, city like there's new comics. Comic that's like trying to physically. Oh, it is so good. <laughs> and the comics should all play themselves. And they can be in it. They would I love show that up, role. I show up to Malibu and I have to face Tim Dillon. And how do you get out of that? You know, Nashville, Theo. <laughs> oh. LA is like the big scene at the end. You know, I'm making a road trip, you know, from. Fuck oh, Dante baby. Nero in New York City. Kum I mean, Kumia. I mean, I couldn't go through this um, road trip. Are you kidding me? I don't got enough fucking bullets. Hold seven. My gun holds seven. I don't know. I'm ready to face them. I'm ready. Let's see. You talk a lot of shit, right? <laughs> you, talk, you talk a big game. No need to yell. Be a fucking man. Because this is the only thing that's going to save you is apologizing to Sam, talking about his kid. What the fuck is wrong with you? Saying <laughs> shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? Say, I like how it's talking about his kid. Saying shit. Talking about his kid. What's wrong with you? Saying shit. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's like, come on. It's like. You hear yourself? He had more like saying shit was worse than talking about the kids. <laughs> you talked about the kids. Plus, not even that. Who said shit? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, God. Saying shit? What the fuck is wrong with you? And this is your third fucking savior. This is where Frankie Five Angels comes in. And I sit Frank you down. Guy. You know what your other option is? Suicide, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> that. Oh, my God. I guess the 20 grand's the best way. To do this. That's the only option. Or suicide? I must leave Earth? <laughs> That's my punishment for You this? should put out... How about everyone just puts out the word, hey, if you've been terrorized by Mike, he's offering 20 grand to you. Yes. To smooth this all yeah, over. Yeah, so that he doesn't and, have to commit suicide. And then just let everyone know that offer is out there and yes. we'll see if anyone accepts. But, and be like, but don't worry because he'll commit suicide if you don't accept the cash. <laughs> he said let's hear some more you're a waste of life anyway I mean you don't have the balls to face anybody you don't have the balls to say anything to anybody's face you sit behind your little fucking computer and you think you're cute kill yourself that's gonna be the last option I don't give a fuck what people think of me for saying that oh, I really don't damn. you got okay. no options we have sent this tell Joey we've sent this to the editors of the book, and they're about to pull your book before its release. You bet you said you don't give a fuck, and they actually hated that part the most. Tell them that. Maybe just do like a long message where you're like, hey, Joey, here's a message from Mike. They're going to pull your book from its release. His father <laughs> owns the town. He's giving 20 grand to anyone who wants it. Bullet point. Just every single thing we've said. And the more Father can... owns the town. Father bought out Jersey. <laughs> Any, anything, right? You can make up your own. Tell if him you Tommy. Want to. two, he hired Tommy two mitts. <laughs> All right, let's hear more. You got three options: fucking pay, apologize like a man, take the punch to the head. It's not gonna hurt. You'll go down. Oh. They'll rush you to the hospital. Maybe they'll cut your fucking thumb off. Oh my God, who the fuck knows? You tell me what you want. Face these guys. Apologize. Be a man. Tell them you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. That you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> You and half of America and the people that follow you that think you're cute, they're the other fucking, you should just kill yourselves. If you think Guys. what he does is cute, go up there and talk about Tripoli's daughter, Rogan's daughter, fucking Chris D'Elia's kid, my daughter. Dog, let me put this, I'm not going to hunt you down. I don't need to hunt you down. But if I ever bump into you, I will run you over with a fucking car. Why? There cannot be any hurting or killing. So now if he sees me, he's going to run. I'm not going to do anything, but if I do see you, I will run over you with a car. Okay. 
Great. What kind of car? Just great. I mean, this isn't a joke. I don't think. <laughs> Wait, what did he say just before that? Let's see. This is really chilling, actually. To I mean, you don't have to go back. Fucking Chris D'Elia's kid, my yeah. dog. But if I ever bump into you, I will run you over with a fucking oh, car. Oh, yeah, that he told you guys to kill yourselves, too. What do you think of that? Oh, the listeners, yeah. yes. Wow. He doesn't mean it. He means it. He wants a mass suicide of epic proportions like the world's never seen. Because of what we've done. You know I'm crazy. Oh. You guys know that at this age group, I belonged in jail, right? Like right now at this age, uh -oh. 59, I thought I was going to be in jail. Right now I'm living a life of fucking Riley. Tell him Mike sent this to your parole officers from when you did that uh, kidnapping and they're looking into it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to blow that for anybody, but for you, I would run you over with the car. I'm not going to pay nobody to get you. There's no Malanucci brothers, but I will see you someday or someday... These people will see you, whether it's Delia, whether it's Tripoli, and Tripoli means business. Tripoli whether means it's Delia, so Delia's hot after me too. This is a straight up horror movie. <laughs> Delia, they're all like getting ready for battle in their own. I would like a scene from each one. I mean, well, they're taking a long ass time. When he said that he Delia's was gonna, let gonna us get, get comfortable, I thought he meant like what six is, months. What is Delia gonna do? Like do comedy to me to death? <laughs> I can't even imagine Delia doing that. I can see him doing like a crab walk motion where he goes into like he bends his knees, but his legs are straight out and then he kind of dips down like this and comes at you. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other dance. person on earth where they've ever had somebody tell them Delia is coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh! that's, that's for the homeless cats. <laughs> Business dog. You're going to have to get out of this one. He's got... These all these guys have the backing, you know. Anybody from Tenth Planet sees you, they're gonna break your fucking arm. Tenth Planet. You think about that. And you don't know what their name is. You don't know who. Some Mexican attacked me and broke my arm. Like, oh, that's what's gonna happen to you. I or if not. you want to get hit, I, if I was you, I'd take the punch to the head. You're gonna take a punch, five stitches, maybe a broken rib, and then tell your daddy to pay a fucking, you know, and you go back and you're out of the woods. Or think about your life. Okay, think wait, about so what you're doing. One broken rib, one punch, and then after that, no more revenge. We're clear. We set up all this fake, like a fake rib. We just put like a slab of baby back ribs under my shirt, you know? <laughs> yes. And we go, okay, you could break my ribs. And they go, I destroy you. And I go, ah. And then as they leave, I go, Pretty good. The scene cuts. Doing podcasts every week, insulting people when you've done nothing with your life. You really haven't done anything with your life. What do you get, 2,000 downloads? A fucking, you don't do anything with your life. You're a failed comic, you're a failed podcaster, oh. and you're a failure as a human being, brother. Oh my but God. you have a chance to turn this around. I know what it is. What do we do? To be a failure yeah. as a human what being. I was the king of that shit. But you got us an option to turn it around. How? I went to prison. I paid my dues. I caught a couple lumps in the head. You know what I'm saying? You get hit a couple times in life. Karma is a motherfucker, dog. And you have lit that fucking uh, firecracker on fire. Now you got to deal with it, brother. So I wish you luck. Got a long wit. I wish you never crossed my motherfucking path. Oh. I'm not going to hunt you down or look for oh. you or send anybody for you. Oh, thanks. I'm an old school dude. I don't want to do any of that shit. Well, then we're fine. I want to bump into you myself and oh. either you apologize and give me your hand and apologize to my wife. Which I don't really. What? Dog, I'd rather hit you your with the wife. call. I don't want an apology from you. What? But Wait, he just said, no, fuck that. I don't want an apology. I'd rather hit you with the car. <laughs> okay. That's Apologize funny. to your wife. I didn't even know you were married. How about we do like a TikTok where you come over here, you get the car, and then I'll be like walking out in the street, and then you like hit me, yeah. and then it cuts to me doing like a dramatic fall. Uh, I'm hurt. Well, I got an idea. How about we sell dartboards with your face on them? <laughs> Shut up. Watch this. Dog, I'd rather hit you with the car. Oh. I don't want an apology from oh. you. But these other guys, you better apologize, brother, because you're going to be hiding the rest of your life over nothing. <laughs> over nothing. <laughs> over you wanting to be cute and can't back it. But I'm hiding from the threat of all the murderers. <laughs> it's not nothing. You're saying they're going to... 
pretty much end me. I'd wish I was dead. They're going to shoot us. They're going to hit us. Yes, with break our They're arms, cut to... off my thumb, break my rib. I'm hit stitches. No car. stitches. Okay, I don't want anything broken. So, yes, I'm hiding. Um, well, if I was hiding, <laughs> it would be because of all of those fears and anxieties. You can't give the points and you can't cover the spread. So why are you doing this? And now everybody knows you're a fucking pussy. You didn't even come down and face them. So whatever you're going to have to say, whatever video you're going to make in response to this, any of your fucking loser fucking friends, listen, brother, uh -oh. you got a dilemma right now. You know this. Look at your wife. Give us a couple thousand. Send her to Mexico. Bye. Why should she get in trouble for you? You're right oh. there next to Tucson. Oh, Send her to Mexico. I don't want her to get punched in the face. I don't want somebody to smack her the way they did Sally Struthers. You ever see Steve McQueen when he smacked Sally Struthers in the getaway? That's a Tremaine. He knocks her the fuck out. You want somebody to do that to your wife? I don't want somebody to do that to my There's wife. There's got to be somebody knocking out somebody in a movie sooner, like, more recent than that. <laughs> That's from, like, 1962. Um, yes, no, of course. We, nobody's getting punched. Let's, uh... Well, anyways, is that almost over? Because we have a whole Yeah, it's almost over. Yeah, happened. we got to show you what just happened. So, that's why I go up there. I would go up there, give out my hand, contact Tripoli... Okay. Contact Rogan, Dalia, whoever the fuck. Contact me. I don't give a fuck. I'll take your apology, but I'm still going to hit you with a fucking car if I ever see you. Because you don't Can't know. Do Listen, when I kidnap Vela, and by the way, Kent Vela lives in Tucson. All I got to do is call him, and he'll go right to your fucking house. Ooh. And he'll take out the kidnapping <laughs> I gave him on you. And I'm not going to do that. So, <laughs> your options are to apologize like a man. Take the punch to the head. You know, set up a boxing match. At Skankfest, I don't know, in Vegas, set up a boxing match. Stink. Why don't you do that? Fight Tripoli, fight all these guys. You talk shit. I already uh, challenged him to that. He declined, by the way. I had a full contract all written out for a boxing match that I would pay for he in was Vegas. Up all these excuses, like not we had the money. arena. No, I had everything booked. We had the arena, and he's like, "Oh, I don't really have time to train right now." So, okay, <laughs> whatever you do, buddy, because I want to do this boxing event in Vegas, like he suggests. Which makes, um, would make my make make me very happy to do that. <laughs> I've been training in boxing for it. They're all gonna kick your fucking ass, and then you're out of the weeds. Or you could do what's behind door number three, and that's slit your wrist, buddy. Wow. I gotta say, these instructions are very confusing. Okay, and hard to so follow. again, this was all over saying he had a Xanax addiction. In a video. Very funny video. You could watch that on YouTube right now. Uh, and then uh, everybody was messaging me. Everybody was saying, Mike, Mike, Mike. You were right. Uh, Coffeezilla message. Mike, I can't believe it. Believe! Because Joey... Uh, are we doing this one, Joey? Uh, yeah. There's two, him on Rogan and his own podcast yeah, are basically yeah, the that's same what I, story. Okay. And I feel well, let's like do Rogan first. Let's do fun. Rogan first and then we'll do that. I mean, we'll <laughs> just do the admittance on this one. First. Okay. Very good. So this was on Joe Rogan. It was also a clip that Joe posted on YouTube. Uh, this is just from last week, I believe. Uh, 37 minutes in. Here's Joey Diaz. No, You're not going to believe it. Oh, just play the clip. Okay. Here we go. Great. Logan experience. When I was on the Xanax, it was basically during the pandemic. I had 10,000 <laughs> of those things at the house. 10,000? Because he was sending me 90 a month from 2012 <laughs> on automatic Are monthly. We? I so wasn't just taking stockpiled them. them? They, they were just going in the closet. They were just going in the fucking... When did you take it? 2012 was when I got it prescribed. When I had my little situation at the comedy store that we goofed about, that was none of, that's not, that was not good. There's no way I should be in a standing walking 10 count. That's what that was that night when I had to follow Morgan Murphy. 
a standing walking ten count? Right? Doug, I went up to. I asked Paulie Shaw. <laughs> I told you the story, and, and He's we got a laughed lot of about it. Like us. But Doug, now thinking about it, I should have done something. I went to the comedy store. I'm in the back. You weren't there. I think you had you were coming in later. Yes, you were coming in later because on Saturdays I used to do the close the original room. Uh huh. Talking, bullshitting with Paulie. Everybody's in the back. No reefer, maybe a joint before I got there. You know, Saturday night, just like the girls. I get there. They say, Joey, you're up next. I walk to the thing, and as I'm walking, I walk up the steps to the original room, and Morgan's on stage, and Paulie's standing there laughing at her. And I walk up, and I'm like, damn, I don't fucking feel good. Like, this is not working. I was starting to get anxiety. Nope. Mm. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. But I went to look at that window for years. Whenever I had anxiety in the original room, I had a window. When I'm on stage, I so got a window, window on the right. Remember? Yeah. Just to look out a window to calm his anxiety, like a baby. Okay, uh, this is just a bunch of bull. Where does he admit to taking the Xanax and all that and the addiction? Because he tells this long-winded story here in this clip about going to the comedy store, having his very first panic attack. Here. That's where I am. Mm. But when I started popping the Xanax, the, the high point was maybe May of during the pandemic. Like, I couldn't leave the house without popping the Xanax, and then when I get in the car, I'd pop another one. Wow. And it would stay in your system. Thank God I wasn't drinking. And what was that doing for you, though? Like, what's the feeling like? Not Calming right. me down. I can't take sleeping pills, and I can't take the strong Xanax. So I have to take the little footballs. But I was taking eight to ten of those motherfuckers a day. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And then when I landed in Jersey, what had happened was, you know how you and Tom had that conversation about my tolerance? Yeah. Okay. That <laughs> tolerance, you, dog, I think, a, as you could tell, I think a lot about this shit. Yeah. You had a conversation with me a couple of years ago about your Romero getting punched in the face and his eye socket. And when he got into the green room, into the, uh, when, he, when the doctor saw him after the fight, his eye socket was healed. It was healing. Healing. Okay. Yeah. I think about what you were talking about, my tolerance with the edibles and stuff. Now, let's get back to early Joe Diaz. When I was a child, the doctor would have to come to my house two days in a row for years. They'd have to shoot me with penicillin on Monday and then come back on Tuesday and shoot me again because I would never take the penicillin. You know, I had a lot of problems with my throat as a kid. Yeah. and maybe You could go to like 950. Yeah, uh, otherwise we could do that uh, Uncle Joey's joint one. Because we got to get through these here. I mean, this is a tremendous... Yeah, that's why I think his is better. Like this one is just him yeah, talking yeah, yeah. his own okay. So let's play this and then I'll go to that Two one. days after I got the jersey, I had something like a weird mild heart attack. My heart didn't stop pounding. And that was because the Xanax turned on me. Mm. I didn't realize that until I went to the knee surgery. And one of the assistants caught it because I couldn't sleep. And they tried to give me something to sleep. And the chick goes, you're, you're uh, withdrawing. Oh, from Benzo. She goes, you're withdrawing naturally. That's why your heartbeat's going up. That's uh, why you're fucked up. It's very dangerous for so those. then she told me you have to flip it. So I had to read uh, a journal about this, uh, about transitioning. You just can't quit. You can't quit right. alcohol, and you can't quit benzos. Okay, yeah. I got to watch the other clip. I mean, we got to get through these me. here. I'm starting to melt down here, if you can't tell. So, um, I'm decaying. <laughs> this time of the show. This is where I start decaying. You're great. Yeah, I know. So, give me the latest clips. Your Uncle the Joey's joint. All right, four, ten. This podcast is brought to you by Onnit. Whoa! Go okay, just give me the best part. 4025. 4025. All right, what's he going to be talking about here? Um, Just his state of paranoia that he was in at the time. Okay. that That's worthy of listening to right now? Okay. I mean, if you... Sure. I mean, I just really you know, wanted... All I need, want? all I need, want? all I need of him is going... Talking about the addiction that he was on the pills. It's yeah, really all I need. Right now. Talking about this okay. whole time. Here it is. Um, Joey Diaz talking about. I know, but I feel like these stories were all of like what led to him needing the pills. But I just want to hear clear as day how many pills he was addicted. You know, that well, kind of talk. I was just saying that in the last okay. one. <laughs> as I said, I'm decaying. 
That's how mm-hmm. I feel. That, that's it for a while. Unless something, I feel bad. My uncle's pushing the, pushing the ticket. I don't know how much time he's got left, but I mean, for that, I'd have to fucking fly out. And the one thing I liked about the Rogan podcast this week that I got to tell my side of the Xanax thing. I fucking loved it. And I, I, I'm getting a lot of emails from people about it that uh, they didn't know what was going on, that they got hooked on them and they went through the same thing. I'm happy I got to tell that story. I'm really happy because it set my life. Forgetting a part. It destroyed my life for two fucking years, oh. guys. You know, uh, Rogan was talking about Jordan Peterson. Destroyed his life for two years. Interesting. I don't even think I uh, said that it destroyed his life for two years. I said he's just addicted, simply addicted. <laughs> didn't know about the destruction. This is, the worse two, than we thought. this is way worse than anything I said. And now it destroyed him. There's a thing, I think it's called echinacea that you get <laughs> okay. after you stop taking those things. That is basically the worst feeling I've ever had in my fucking life. I can't just... And it was brought up... Every time I took a Xanax to calm my anxiety, that feeling would start. Interesting. And it's a feeling of uncertainty. You can't really grasp. Your heart's beating. Your stomach is something... It's like 20 things that are, are wrong. And I used to live like this. It, guys, I don't wish this shit on anybody. It's wow. like I told Joe. It's not that I was doing Xanax to drink and jump up and down. I really had a really bad condition. Uh-oh. It was not fucking good. And now after, now my anxiety is at, if my anxiety was at 120 three years ago, my anxiety now is at 5%. Wow, that's much lower. Let's get that percentage up, please. You, you, you know what to tell them. All right, was there anything more with this that we really needed there to There was, say? but we don't really need it. We don't really need to see it. Let's take a break. I'm sorry. I am uh, I got to tell you, you got to follow my lead here. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. I'm right back. Thank you. Thank you. 